Hey there, this is Jim Bovard for the Future of Freedom Foundation. There are certain phrases we hear all the time that are supposed to keep Americans paying and obeying. One of my favorites is, truth will out. Politicians and editorial writers toss this phrase out to simmer folks down who might be worried the government's conspiring against them. Actually, truth will out is the biggest fairy tale in Washington. The phrase, truth will out, was first recorded in Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice. Often in Shakespeare's plays, truth only comes out almost er after almost everyone has been conned, stabbed, or screwed. It's not much better nowadays. Maybe I'm jaded, or maybe I'm just surly, but when it comes to politics, truth will out should be confined to sarcasm and satire, not to serious pontificating. Think about the John F. Kennedy assassination in 1963. The Johnson administration rushed the Warren Commission to issue a verdict approving the official story of that killing. But the commission announced that they would seal the most important records for 75 years, basically until all the people involved in the cover-up had gotten their pensions and died. The following year, President Johnson was running against Barry Goldwater for the presidency. Folks were warned that if people voted for Goldwater, that the U.S. would probably get involved in a massive land war in Vietnam. Well, people voted for Goldwater, and Johnson used the Gulf of Tonkin resolution to drag the U.S. into war in Vietnam. That resolution was a fraud from the get-go. American officials knew that the charges were false, but they helped, they helped Johnson rally the nation to war and assure his election to the presidency. Fast forward a few decades to 2003. The, the Bush administration was claiming that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and was tied to the 9-11 attacks. Both these charges were complete hokum, but they were enough to once again drag the U.S. into war. A few years later, Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld uh, promised, ultimately, the truth gets out. Well, that's not much consolation to the dead American soldiers and the dead Iraqi civilians. And we still don't know a lot about that war. Right now, U.S. troops are fighting in 14 foreign nations. Will the Pentagon tell us the details? I don't think so. How about our chances of learning the sordid facts of the U.S. government's dealing with the Saudis? Um, the Saudi regime was had a lot of people that were tied to the 9-11 attacks, but, you know, we didn't hear much about that. I've been an investigative journalist for over 35 years. I fought many government agencies to get the facts. Um, sometimes I get some dirt. Sometimes I get a smoking gun or a few whiffs. But most government cover-ups succeed. I've been using the Federal Freedom of Information Act, known as FOIA, since the early 1980s. This law is supposed to assure Americans that the government's transparent because federal agencies are obliged to respond within 20 days to your request for records. Some years ago, I sent a bunch of FOIA requests to federal agencies to see what they had on me in their files. The FBI replied they had nothing on me, even though Lewis, FBI Chief Louis Free had publicly condemned my articles on Ruby Ridge. No records? Eh. The FBI told a lot of lies about the Randy Weaver case, enough to con much of the media, but not enough to snow a brave Idaho jury. I wrote a lot about trade policy in the 1990s. I clashed at times with people at the U.S. Trade Representative uh, Office. I filed a FOIA to get their files on me. Response comes back, we have nothing on Kevin Bovard. Folks, this isn't even close enough for government work. So I've been writing about the Transportation Security Administration for 15 years. I filed a FOIA request for them. What do you have on me? Uh, the you know TSA chief had publicly condemned one of my articles, uh, but that never showed up in the response. So what did the agency chief do? Type in his uh, type in his response on an online newspaper portal? I don't I don't think so. After a tussle with TSA uh, screeners at Reagan National Airport uh, back in March of this year, I filed a FOIA request to get the videos of that encounter. 
I got nothing yet. I'm still waiting, guys. I'm on the edge of my chair. Admittedly, I have had some fun with that incident uh, in the Los Angeles Times um, because I got on their nerves too. And uh, the uh, lead TSA screener, you know, he starts doing uh, his enhanced pat down. And I said, you know, um, careful where you jam here. I'll file a complaint. He says, I need a witness. I'm thinking, shit, I need the witness. But I had fun with that in the article. It got reprinted in the Minneapolis Star Tribune with the headline, TSA, the world's most incompetent agency. I wonder if that article will show up the next time I FOIA the TSA. Politicians and federal agencies have long recognized that what people don't know won't hurt the government. That's why we need whistleblowers like Julian Assange, WikiLeaks, Edward Snowden, and other courageous folks. That's why journalists have to press a lot more vigorously against federal agencies um, because otherwise we'll be even more clueless and people can't consent to what the government hides from them. This is Jim Bovard. Thanks for watching. Thank you.